Thank you, sweet Jesus. Don't you love them tonight? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I tell you what, if it wasn't for him, I don't think half of us or maybe any of us would be here tonight, praise God. We'd be dead or in jail or somewhere we shouldn't be. Thank God for Jesus' saving grace. Thank God for what he did. Thank God for our Lord, praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead, church. You got it. We all know this one. Well, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. I told
Brother Timothy, that one right there. I think I might go a little bit off on the piano just a little bit. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. see. I got you in a little bit. Yes. I'll find it. And Brother Chet's getting ready there. Brother Mike, uh, sister Gypsy has a song. I don't know if she's got tape or CD. Tape? CD? CD. So she's going to sing maybe after her brother Tim, and I think uh, he's got like 20 to do, and he's got 18 more to do. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. Bless you. Gloria a Dios. Aleluya. Thank you, Jesus. Gloria, Gloria, Jesucristo. Santo eres, Señor. G. G. Go with that a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, right. It's not okay, I can't really tell. Yeah. Because there's a mom back here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Alabado Dios. I can't hear the piano at all. Gloria, Gloria, Cristo, Aleluya. Hay poder en Jesús, Aleluya. You know, uh, Christ died. What, what was the reason why Christ died? What was the reason why? Does anybody know? For our salvation. To save our sin, right, right? But God sent his son to die on the cross. Why? Because he loved, he loved us. He did it for love. There's a song called If That Wasn't Love. Yes. 
such a blessing. Uh, the lady came from Akron, I think it was Akron or Canton, and uh, she preached. And the anointing fell. And I tell you what, every chill bump was on everybody. If they wasn't, then they were cold. <laughs> because it was a wonderful, wonderful service. And it draws us close to you, you know, to God. And that's what we need. We Amen. need that of every service to draw us close Amen. and closer to God. God. Sheltered in the arms of God. That's where I want to be, and that's where we should be. I feel the touch of God's hands so kind and tender all oh, they're leading me in paths that I must draw I'll have no fear for my Jesus all oh, he walks beside me and I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise, they don't worry me. For I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. On earth can harm me, hallelujah. Yes, oh, for I'm sheltered, safe within the arms of God. Yes, for I'm sheltered, safe oh, within the arms of God. I shall hear all the call from heaven for Come home, my child, it's the last smile you must draw. You are full of sleep, hallelujah, and I sleep in glory. For oh, hallelujah, oh, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. Oh, yes, I'm sheltered safe within
this song when I was 17 and I had been in a bad car accident and the doctors told my parents I'd be dead by noon. When I got to come home, I couldn't walk for six months. It had broke the bones of my legs and my feet, my fingers. I'd cut my lip off and it um, fractured my sternum. And you know, I was laying in bed and I said, you know, God, this can't be happening. And he said, and it was all dreary outside, and he said, come on here, sunshine. I was feeling so low, it just couldn't be so. That just wasn't me. I thought
to be a sanctuary. Your hands holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a your Bibles tonight. Brother Torres has his Bible there. Praise God. Lift him up. Shake him around a little bit. And as I always say, there's no dust in these Bibles because we use our Bibles. Praise God. Amen. Repeat after me with conviction in our heart and our spirit. This, this is my Bible. Bible. This is, is the truth, truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. truth. This, this is, is the Lord God. God. Jesus is the Word. This is the good news. The good report, the one sound doctrine, this is what believe in. Stand on, live by it, trust it. Amen. Amen. I pray that it'd be nice if God would give me a glimpse from heaven one day when I'm there with him to look down and see someone still doing that in the church. I was watching an old rerun of Perry Mason and when they used to put their hands in the Bible and saying, you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And it started to dawn on me, our Bible is the truth. Amen. The whole truth and nothing but the truth, praise God. Amen. Thank you, sweet Jesus, praise hey. God. Good to see you, brother, tonight. Good to see you. God bless you. I want to share something before we get started here, but I want to open up with prayer here. If we, we'll bow our heads for a moment. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, the maker of heaven and earth. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the many songs and the prayers that we've already answered, Lord God. And Lord God, I ask that you be with each and every one of us tonight. Lord God, open up our spiritual eyes and spiritual ears to receive what you have for us tonight, Lord God. Let the words that come forth not be my words, Lord, not the words of man, but your words, precious Lord God. Lord, we want to be obedient to your spirit. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This morning, we had a baptism here, and I want to talk about it a little bit again. We took the chair here, and we placed it, and the young man wasn't able to go to the lake as we normally would go to and because of some problems with his health and with his foot, and we placed him in a chair. And I had talked to him over a week ago, and he says, what do I have to do to be baptized? And it reminded me of the eunuch when he was talking to Phil. What, 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 what do I need to do to be baptized? What's stopping me from baptism? And there's a little creek of water here, maybe just a little dab of water. And they stopped the carriage, and Philip baptized him. And I started to think, you know what? There's nothing that can stop us from baptizing. So we brought him in here today, and he was in here, and he took a seat here, and we poured a bottle of water over him, and we could feel the presence of God. And God's always here anyhow because, you know, it's not the building because he lives inside the believer. But it's so nice when we can feel him when he's manifested. And we can just sense his presence, praise God. Sometimes he's God's here. What we should say is God's always here. But it's good when we can sense him and feel him, praise God. That's the right thing. And there's still a little bit of residue. The, the carpet isn't completely dry. And God had put a thought in my mind that that represented his cleansing blood on Calvary 2,000 years ago. And I started to share a story about a little girl, and this was a story I heard about 50 years ago. I wasn't a Christian at the time, but I heard the story, and the story has stuck with me. Her name was Kathy Abernathy. She would have been maybe about four or five years old, and her father had a, a disease, and she had to have some of Kathy's blood. So her blood was the only one that matched up. And back in those days, they didn't have all the sophisticated stuff that we have today in hospitals, and, and they were at the hospital, and the doctor said, if we don't get some of Kathy's blood, this man's going to die. 
So the mother went to the little girl and says, Honey, i got to tell you something, sweetie. Your daddy needs something from you, or he's going to die. And she says, I give him anything. What, what does he need? The mom said, He needs some of your blood. He needs your blood so that your dad can live. And the onlookers had reported that time that Kathy had put her head down. She was really quiet. You could hear a pin drop. No noise at all. Then about a minute that seemed like eternity, she lifted up her head and says, I'll give my blood so my daddy can live. They prepped her, put him on the gurney, and they moved her into the room with her father. And her father looked at her and smiled, and she smiled back at him, and they held each other's hands for a moment, and, and they started to put both of them to sleep in those days, and they put them both out. Well, the surgery was a success. The blood transfer was a success, praise God. Something's wrong here. The blood. <laughs> the surgery was a success, but hear me out here. Hear me out. The mother started to wake up Kathy and said, Sweetie, Sweetie Pie, it's time to wake up. Your daddy's okay. It's time to wake up. We're going to go home. And she started to wake up and she looked around at everybody and a little dazed, a little confused. And, and she had these words. She just, Does this mean I'm not going to die? That little girl thought if she gave, gave that blood, that little girl thought if she gave that blood that she would die. And I started to remember the scripture. What greater love <laughs> that a man can have this. They would lay his life down so his brother would live. And that's what Jesus did. He laid his life down and shed his blood so we can live. The word of God says that there's life in the blood. How many people know that? There's life in the blood. And as I was looking at this wet floor this morning, and, and I'm still looking at it today, it's not all the way dried up. Maybe it almost stayed like that all the time. I said, that represents the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what the, that's what the baptism represents, is the death, burial, and resurrection of the new man, praise God. And I shared that this morning, and, I, and, I, and it's still with me today, praise God. Wouldn't it be great if, if we could go back into time, Sister Kim, and, and we don't want to see all the gruesomeness of it, but you know what? I thank God for every strike that he took. I thank God for the thorns in his head. I thank God for every drop of blood that Jesus shed because he shed it for you and I. That showed us that he loved. The Bible says he commanded, he commended, he demonstrated his love for us while we were yet sinners. He died for us, praise God. And so that blood, that water represented the blood of Jesus Christ. And I went down and I touched it when it was really wet this morning. And I said, wouldn't it be awesome to be able to, to have just one drop fall from maybe his brow and hit us on the head as we were onlookers? Or to be able to touch the blood that was dripping down on that cross and start to realize that this blood is life-saving blood. Blood that can wash away our sins. Blood that has washed away our sins. That had made us cleaner than wool itself. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning I had a sermon about you are significant. You are important. Amen. Nobody is too small in the kingdom of God. Amen. Nobody is too small at all, praise God. Tonight I want to share a, a sermon with you and we'll let God have his way here. He has called all of us to do a task. I want us to turn to the Gospel of Mark, 5th chapter, starting with the 19th verse. Amen when you're there. To kind of set up the prelude here, Jesus had just cast out a legion of demons out of the man and put them in swine, the swine, the pigs, and they had gone down the hill to die. This was a man that was not in his right mind. This was a man that it would break all the bonds and chains, and Brother Tim, he'd break the ropes, and he cut himself, one of the gospels said too. Some of the gospels said that people were afraid of him. He was a crazy man. He was a lunatic. He had a he was demon-possessed, but Jesus freed this man. Amen. Freed this man. And 19 says this. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, 
that saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. That's the message this morning or this afternoon, this evening. Go home. Go home. Go home and tell your friends. Go home and tell your friends. When I was first saved, I wanted to tell everybody about Jesus Christ. Every stranger, everybody I met at the store, everybody on my customers, my customers at their homes, and, and everybody at the office, I wanted to tell about Jesus Christ. And some of them thought I was a little bit of a, what they would call a, uh, a Jesus freak. Today, I want to tell everybody about Jesus Christ. But it seems that when we get into a church or the church world, Sister Gypsy, the only ones that we talk about or two about our Lord Jesus are ourselves, who we're preaching to the choir. God doesn't want us just to preach to the choir. He wants us to go out, and we've spoken of this and taught on this before. He wants us to go out in the world and proclaim the saving grace, the healing, the deliverance of our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to go and talk about the blood to our families, to our neighbors, to our friends, to everybody that we come into contact with. Lots of times we don't do that. We don't do it at all. I, I, I give pride and respect to those that go out and they pass out leaflets. Sister Soria and, and, and Brother Jose, I know they pass out tracts and they'll pass out booklets to everyone that will receive one out there. That's, that's, that's a ministry of its own out there. A lot of people don't do that anymore. You know, one thing, we're not Jehovah's Witness by any means, but one thing i got to tell you what they do that we don't. They go out all the time, and they're required to go out, Brother Charlie, to knock doors out there. And they go out two by two and knock doors, praise God, to tell them about coming to the church service. They call it meetings. To come to the meetings. Come to the meetings. Come to the meetings. Today, we don't do that in the average church. We come to church one day, two days, three, this church three and four times a week. We're here. And we're preaching to each other. And that's good. We need to encourage each other. And we hope that somebody brings a sinner man or a sinner woman in to hear the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. But what we have in our own backyard, we need our children and our grandchildren yes, to hear about it. We need our doctors and our nurses that we visit. We need our hairdressers when we go get our hair done to hear about it. We need the people at the grocery stores, at Giant Eagle and the convenience stores to hear about it. We need people at McDonald's to hear about it. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and give a tract to everybody. I'm not telling you to go and order your fries and a sandwich and a milkshake and say, let me tell you about Jesus. But I'm going to tell you what. If you want to tell somebody about Jesus, God will open up an opportunity. God will open up a door Amen. for you to tell someone about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. Luke 8 39 has the same story and it says, Return to thy own house. Now, who played show and tell when they were kids? This is show and tell. This gospel says, Return to thy own house and show how great things God hath done unto thee. I had uh, you all raise your hands earlier. If God has delivered you from disease or sickness, Amen. not every hand went in the house. Amen. You know what? We need to remind ourselves. We need to remind other people. We need to remind the lost that we have a miracle way making God. Amen. When there is no miracles around, he is there to make a miracle. When there's no way, he is there to make a way, praise God. God wants us to talk to one another. God wants us to go out there and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Psalm 66, 16 says this. Come and hear all you who fear God, who reverence God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. We need to get out there and say, let me tell you about this one that I met a long time ago. Jessica, let me tell you about this man whose name is Jesus. Let me tell you about one that's changed my life. 
Let me tell you one that healed my daughter when she was a little girl. Let me tell you about another another time my other daughter needed healing and she was delivered. Let me tell you about this Jesus that took my mother off the deathbed 27 years ago, 26 years ago. They gave her no hope that she had cancer. 26 years later, she's alive and breathing today. Let me tell you about this Jesus that took my father off of a deathbed and brought us in and said he was going to die. Let me tell you about this Jesus. I remember the same Jesus, Brother Mike. You brought me up to the hospital over in O'Leary around your mother. She was almost comatose at one time. We all went around the bed and we prayed. And a few days later, I hear that she's up and talking and moving around. And uh, praise God. Let me tell you about this Jesus that's taken people of the wheelchair that we see and they started to walk. Let me tell you about a Jesus that had healed a woman in this church that was a death sentence. Sue Branscombe, who was dying, her organs were turning black. We need to tell people about that, not just within the church, but outside the church, praise God. I'm starting to come to realize that when I go and pay a bill or when I'm ordering something for the kids, I need to not just bless the food at the table. I need to tell them about my Lord Jesus. We need to tell everybody about our Lord Jesus Christ. I was happy to see in a Bible study that Brother Jose and Sister Sonia brought some friends in. Glad to have you here, young man. I said a few weeks ago, if everybody brought one person and we doubled the church overnight. Glad to see you here, Brother Cesario. We prayed for your brother. We prayed for you and your wife yes. tonight. Praise God. God. You know what? God has a ministry already set up. I want you to turn to Ephesians. Praise God. Turn to Ephesians. 4.11 Ephesians 4.11 Ephesians 4.11 says this and this is God's fivefold ministry and he speaking of our Lord gave some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and some teachers I have people, Brother Tim, they bring that up all the time and say, you know what? I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm not an evangelist. So how does that apply to me? You as a Christian have been called to do something. You have been called to do something, praise God. I want you to turn to the book of Acts, first chapter, verse 8. And we preach on this all the time. The book of Acts, first chapter, Verse 8 says this, And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. Say witnesses. witnesses. Unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and in the uttermost part of the world. Praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. I remember reading, a man, or reading about in the fourth chapter of John about the, the Samaritan woman. You know what? She went to do something. God is telling us to go out. He's telling us to go out. And in fact, he, he, he's, he's telling us to go out and, 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 and the gospel of Mark uh, on the 7th 16th chapter, he says, go out and preach the gospel to everyone. Go out and preach the gospel. Go out and preach the gospel. In Matthew 28, he says, go, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples of all of them. Go. He wants you to go. He wants you to go out. He wants you to have church. The Bible says don't forsake assembling yourselves as many have. But what he wants us to do, brothers and sisters, is get off these chairs and say, you know what? We had church today. We felt the presence of God today. But I'm going to go out now because I got power within me. I got the Holy Ghost power within me. And I'm going to go out. And I'm going to spread the gospel on the street. I'm going to let the drunk hear about it. I'm going to let the prostitute hear about it. I'm going to let the drug addict hear about it. But there is a saving grace. We've talked about that amazing grace. There's a saving grace, Tony, that nobody has but Jesus. There's a saving grace that will take the lowest of the lowest and bring them back up and restore them. We need to get out there and start doing that a little bit more. Well, I'm not a preacher. You don't have to be a preacher. All you need to do is be a witness. All you need to do is open your mouth. The Bible says He'll fill your mouth. The Bible says He'll tell you what to say. The Bible will lead and guide you in all truth. That's what the Bible says about the Holy Ghost. You don't have to worry about what you're going to say. God will fill your mouth. 
God will fill your mouth. And we, we talk not just with our mouth, but with our actions. We talk with what we do. We talk about this foreign feeding the poor and the hungry and, 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 and not enabling people, but lifting them up and giving them food, giving them clothing, saving souls one soul at a time. Jesus had 5,000, but many times as we read in the Gospels, there was only one-to-one, one-to-one relationship. The lady at the well, I, I addressed her a little bit this morning. He goes to the well, there's no crowd around. The disciples aren't there. They're in another town. And he starts talking to this lady about a living water. That if you have this water, you're never going to thirst again, Brother Charlie. And she goes, give me this living water. And you know what he I gave to her, too? And the Bible says that she left her bucket of help and ran to town and told yeah. all the folks about this man that's got to be the Messiah, that's got to be the Christ. He knew everything about me. Everything about me. This has got to be him. What was she doing? She wasn't a preacher. She wasn't. She didn't have a, a, a degree up on a wall saying that she was a preacher or a teacher or, 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 or a master of doctrine. She didn't have any of that. She didn't have any of that. But she had a divine encounter with God himself and the flesh and the form of Jesus. She had a divine experience with him. And God filled her mouth. God filled her mouth because when she went to town, Brother Cesar, had said that they heard her. They heard her because if they had to hear her, she had to speak something to them. So we need to, to go out. God has called us to speak. God has called us to open our mouth. God has called us to go into the highways and the byways. And she spoke to them. And the Bible said that many believed her. Many believed her because of her testimony. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. What's your testimony? God has made you a brand new creature. God has changed you, Jessica. God has changed you, Brother Mark. God has made a new spirit, a new heart inside of us. So let everybody know about that. Praise God. I'm not going to put Brother Mark on the spot right now, but one day I hope he shares what he told me a few weeks ago in Bible study. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Go! into your factories. Go into your workplaces. Go into areas and tell them about a change in you. Tell them about Amen. a brand new life in you. Tell them about this man that you met. Amen. His name is Jesus. Praise God. Amen. There's a song Amen. like that. Amen. Sister Amen. Pat used to sing, I once, I once Amen. met a man. I once met a man. Praise God. I wish he was here and sing it tonight. I once met a man. Who met a man one time? And his name was Amen. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. And he was the Christ. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. In Luke 14, 23, God's holy word says this, And the Lord said to his servant, Go out, say go out. Go out, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. That word compel, you know what it means? It doesn't mean just to ask. If you look up that word, the definition... The biblical definition means to urge them, to constrain them. <laughs> that means you might have to pull on their hand a little bit. Come on, brother. Come on, sister. Come on, let's go to church today. Going back to the lady at the well, many people believed of her testimony, but she brought a lot of people to see Jesus. In other words, she brought a lot of people to church. And once they heard Jesus speak, it said many more believed. When you get people in the house of God, many more will believe too, praise God. Amen. Go into the highways. Go into the byways. Luke 9, 6 says, let the dead bury the dead. But go, go then and preach the kingdom of God. I have a question that God has been asking me more and more. And, I, and I'm going to share this with you. This is true. Because if God keeps me on my toes, I know he keeps you on your toes too. Yes, he does. But when was the last time we witnessed to somebody outside the church world? When was the last time that we witnessed to a lost person outside the church atmosphere? Okay. It's easy to do it in here. We have our brothers and sisters, right? Mm -hmm. We got encouragers next to us. Right. If I say something positive, Brother Nelson's going to say something positive. Brother, Brother Tim's going to sit up and say something. We're going to add, we're going, we want this person 
saved. We want them to hear the saving message of our Lord Jesus Christ. But when we're out there in the streets and we got the people that don't want to talk to us at all, they don't want to even hear that word Jesus sometimes. Hmm. They don't want us to preach. And they definitely don't want us pointing fingers, and we shouldn't be pointing fingers at anybody. Right. But to show the love of Jesus Christ. Yes. And to sit down and say, you know what? Let me tell you about this man called Jesus. I know you're going through a rough time right now. I know things aren't perfect right now. I know you got a monkey in your back. I know you're in need of finances. But I'm going to tell you somebody that did something great for me. Somebody that took away the taste of alcohol. Somebody that took away the taste of drugs. Somebody that Amen. changed my life that no matter what situation mm -hmm. I'm in, I can still be happy and content Amen. because of him. And when I talk about him, I'm talking about this man called Jesus, who is Lord God Almighty, who spoke things into existence, who gave life to the world, and then come back to the world to lay his life down again to save us. Let me tell you about that one called Jesus. Let me tell you about that. You know what? I've said that to men and women both and had them cry like babies because you know what? They're all looking for an answer. They've heard of Jesus. They've heard of the church. But they don't know anything about the church. They don't know anything about Jesus. We are living in a generation, Sister Gypsy, that when we say, well, there's a falling away of the church, there's this. We have dropped the ball ourselves in the church world. We have dropped the ball. We have dropped the ball. Yes, the have. church should be changing the world, but we're yes, letting yes. the world change the churches yes, yes, today. Yes, yes. We don't have the, the, the singing like we used to. We don't pray the same as we Amen. used to. You got a 10-minute sermon and two, three songs, and you're out. Or you put on some type of show. Let's have a light show. Let's put on a smoke show. Let's put this. And, 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 and I heard a while back, the brother brought up to our church, there was even a bar in a basement in an area of a church. That's not church. That's a nightclub. We are not a nightclub. We're not an entertaining center. We are church to praise a holy God, a magnificent God. Some of the needs to be glorified. Some of the needs to be lifted up. And what we need to do is get into those highways and byways and say, you know what? We're the church. We're going to go not just to church. We're not going to go just to the nursing home. Let's go to the streets. Let's talk about the one that's lost. Let's, let's not be embarrassed and pray a, a, a little 30 second prayer at Denny's. If you're in a restaurant, man, start screaming the name of Jesus. Pray right. over that food. Bless right. that food. Let people see there's still people that honor this guy that we heard about. See, the generation today weren't made to go to uh, church. No. I have to tell me, oh, you don't want to hurt your child. Don't, don't make them go uh -huh. to church. I'm going to tell you what happened to me this morning, and this is the truth, and you can verify it with Molly and Tabitha. Tabitha was over at her friend's last night, and little Stephen was going to go to church today. I told him, he, I'm going to go to church. He said, well, I want to sleep, and I don't want to go to church. I said, you are going to church tomorrow. And I said, Hazel, you're going to church too. I get up this morning, and, and Molly said, well, Stephen stayed up to 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning watching videos, so he, I can't wake him up. He's not going to go to church. And, and, uh, and she said that Hazel laid back down. She yelled up. I said, well, let me put it this way. She's going to go to church. She's going to go to church That's today. Right. And I got on the telephone and texted my daughter, and I hope she's watching tonight and she can verify this. And I said, you know what? I'm very bothered and very hurt about this. I said, you know what? We have to get our, our children conditioned yes, with the habit do. of going to church and wanting to go to the church. 30 seconds later, I hear Molly coming up. Sense. We're up. We're going to get ready for church. Abby had called, and she called me. She said, I'm going to come home. We're going to go to church. They came to church this morning. Yes, they did. Didn't they? Yes. You know what? I'm going to compel them. That's I'm going to encourage you. them. That's right. Little you Hazel know. starting to lift up hands. Little Hazel starting to yes. clap her hands. Little I Hazel, know. two and a half years old, starting to play the tambourine. But I know one thing, and I've already seen it with Damien. If they I stay out of you. church, if they stay out of church, they don't want to come to church. A habit, you want it to become a habit, that's a good habit, that's a good thing. We, if we don't go to church all the time. There was a time I quit going to church because the church disbanded, they moved to other churches. So I quit going to church because I couldn't find a church, so you always have an excuse. I couldn't find a church like my home church. I couldn't find a church like it used to be. 
They were too small, too loud, too, too this, too that, too up to me, too with this, too, too everything. There was always an excuse. So I didn't go to church. A week became a month. A month became a year. A year became a couple of years. Then a couple of years, I'm back out in the, in the in, in, we'll call it the honky tonks, the bars, and running around and doing things I shouldn't be doing again. Because when you get away from the church, we get away from God's people. And you're around the world. That world touches you like radiation. That world gets on you. Sin gets on you. And you get back into sin. I hated it. I was so ashamed. And then to have somebody call and say, Brother, we haven't seen you in ages. And they live in another town. They think you're still going to church. Brother, sister, will you pray for me? I got a sick child. And it's like, I'm not the one. Talk about feeling ashamed. Bendito Jesus. But you learn. But guess what? I have a daddy, Brother Cesario. That he keeps the door open all the time. I have a daddy like your daddy. He keeps the light on all the time. I have a daddy that's waiting for his son and his daughter to come back home. I have a daddy that's there with open arms saying, there she is. There he is. He's coming back home. My son was lost. My daughter was lost. But now they're found. They were dead. But now they live. And they'll live forever. That's the kind of God we serve. But we need to share that, not just with each other. We need to share it with everybody we come into contact with. I need to share it personally with my children more. I tell the story, which is true. I haven't heard from my daughter, Anita, in over two years. She's got mental problems, and she's addicted to drugs, and, and I hope she washes. I'm not doing this to put her business out there. I'm not doing that to hurt her. But every time that I talk, start talking about the Lord, she don't want to be preached to. She don't want to be talked to. But I'm praying that someone will enter her life. Yes. Someone will enter her life. Yes. Just like you are entering somebody's life. There's somebody in another state or another town that is praying and say, I pray that some man or woman of God will talk to my Amen. children, talk Amen. to my grandchildren, talk to my loved ones. You know what? God might put an unction in your heart to say, you know what? Maybe I need to pray a little louder because somebody needs to hear this in this restaurant. Maybe I need to go over to this woman or this man that looks distressed a little bit and say, hey, I don't know what you're going through. It's none of my business. You don't have to tell me anything. But I feel in my spirit that you need something. And I'm not saying this. I'm not a religious fanatic, but I'm going to tell you why. There's a man that touched me years ago that gave me an uplifting in my life in all areas, and his name is Jesus. Can I pray for you right now? Can I pray for you? And that person says yes. Pray for them. God will guide you to the right people. I just don't go into a store and say, who wants to get prayed for? Don't do that. God will direct you to somebody. God will guide you to somebody. And you have answered the prayer for some mother in another state, for some grandparent in another state, for some father elsewhere, or maybe in the same state or same city. They say, put somebody, put somebody of God in front of my children. Put somebody of God in front of my loved ones that can tell them about Jesus and pray for them and with them. So when you're blessing somebody else, you are a blessing for another mother, another grandmother. And you know what? They do the same for us. Maybe they're in another town. Maybe they're out in Meadville, Pennsylvania, Lionsville, PA tonight. Yes. And I pray that someone will run into my daughter, Anita, and say, you know what, young lady? Let me tell you about somebody that saved and saved you. And maybe she'll say, I don't want to hear that. But what we can say is this, you may not want to hear that, but they, maybe that person's been on the same thing. I want to say, I was in the same way as you at one time. I didn't have a place to live. I was living in a shack. I was beaten. I was a drug addict. But you know what? I was delivered. Maybe that will wake her up or someone will wake her up to hear that. That's why we do what we do. Let's not be keep the gospel here just in the chairs. Let's go into the streets. Let's go into the highways and the hedges and compel them, compel them, constrain them to urge them is what that. Let's go to church, brother. Hey, how are you doing? Let's go to church. You know the best way to get somebody to church? Pick them up. Pick them up. We used to get people up at church. 
Now we don't do that. It's too inconvenient. We're running late. We got so much baby events going on in our family. We just go to church. And they don't show up. They didn't have a car or whatever the case might be. But you know what? You go into somebody's driveway, it's 9 o'clock. Beep, 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 beep. Charlie, wait up. Beep, beep. And Charlie looks at and says, oh, no. They are here. Charlie, I see you peeking through the curtains. Get the rest, buddy. We're going to church. When you go, that's compelling them to come in. That's urging them to come in. We don't do that. We drive back, all the lights are off. So we meet one. Enough, and we're gone. No. You have a mission to do. If you ask somebody to come to church, bring them to church. Now, I don't know if they brought you or you came yourself, but, but you're at church, and I appreciate that. Yeah. I do. I'm, pre I'm glad you're here, young man. God bless you. you are, you're here tonight, both of you guys. Yeah. Praise God. I know we have a little bit of a language barrier, but you know what? We don't have a spirit barrier. We have the same God, the same spirit, praise God. But go into the world. Go tell them the great things that God has done for you. We just want to tell them about the gospel. That's, that's saving gospel. No. But put yourself. God took me off the streets. No. Now, I thank God I wasn't on the streets. I'm using this as an example. But God has given me a joint of peace I never had. Hallelujah. Every one of us. Yes. Continue to tell people. Yes, God. Continue to tell people. Oh, you yes. got such a business office. You know, it's no secret that I... Sale and service vacuum cleaners, rainbow vacuum cleaners. Been doing it 50 years now. Can you believe that? Yeah. 50 years. I tell everybody I started when I was two years old. 50 oh. years. Two years old. But everybody that I run into, every <laughs> God bless you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody's handing money tonight. 52 years. 50 years, rather. But everybody I run into. I talk about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Christian and non-Christian alike. And I'm going to tell you something. I've never had anybody ever refuse me talking to them, whether they're a complete stranger or I've met them two or three, four, or five times before. And if they're a Christian, guess what? We have church. Amen. We'll sit, Sister Mary. I had a whole family just about a month and a half ago. We're sitting in, out in, uh, in uh, Bear Run, Ohio, north of Akron. We're sitting with our hands together on a Saturday yeah. afternoon and praying. Yeah. Praying about this world and about their families, praise God. Amen. Praise God. And they had a couple that they were Christian, but a couple that were there weren't Christian. But they came along and prayed with us right then and there. People need to see that. We go down to the lake and we like baptizing of the lake. I remember Brother Al, we were, we were talking about getting a baptismal, which I still would like in cold weather. But he said, Why do that? He says, Do you see all the people looking at us, looking at you guys when you're going on the water? That's a testimony, yes, praise God. Yes. There's still people baptizing, Hallelujah. baptizing yes. people yes. out there. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus, praise God. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our front looks terrible sometimes, and thank God for that lady that's been helping clean up a little bit, thinking all the church people are helping up more. And we had tables and racks all the way across. I want to keep it down and we had somebody complain and complain to the city, but we also found out the city said there's nothing the city could do about it. Mm -hmm. But I don't want it to be an eyesore. I hear you. Do you know how many people I have on the other side that have called me, contacted me, and got a hold of me and said, this is a great thing that yes. you guys are doing? Yeah. It may look like an eyesore, but man, there's some people that this is the way that they're being fixed for their clothing. I had a lady last Saturday, we're trying to get to the classroom, and I have bags and bags. I had a whole room full of bags a lot of children's clothes. And she came up and she said, do you mind if I spend a little time out front and take some clothes? I said, man, you can take it all. She goes, no, no, I, I, I'm looking for children's clothes because I used to work with an agency that would help mothers and mothers to be in. That agency doesn't exist anymore, so I'm just trying to get some newborn kids uh, clothes and maybe up to size eight or nine. I said, you want some clothes? I said, you stay right there. I already had them bagged up and tagged up and boxed mm -hmm. up, uh, brought up, and we filled the entire car. I gave her some cars. Uh, uh, baby stuff and all that. And she goes, where are you going? I said, it's stuff that has come in that has just accumulated. 
And I said, you come back next week. And she came back next Wednesday. We filled her car up again, praise God. She's coming back in this Tuesday. What, guess what we're going to do? We're going to fill her car up again. Amen. Praise, praise, Lord. Lord. praise God. Amen. That's awesome. But we had a chance to talk about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Talk with Gracias. Jesus to other Christians, other yes. churches. Yes. Don't stay just Gracias. within one church wall. We're all part of the same church. Amen. It doesn't yes. matter if the church is in Illyria, Lorraine, Lorraine, wherever the church may be. There's only one church. Yes. We've just decided to come here tonight to serve a mighty God. Yes. To give him honor, glory, and reverence. But go, go out. Amen. Go forth. I need to go forth more. Someone says, Brother, you do enough. I don't do enough. Because you know what I believe? We can always better our best. Amen. We can always do a little bit more. Yes. We can always do a little bit more. And as Jesus said himself, he didn't come here to be served. He came to what? Serve. serve. Let's serve one another, but let's also serve the community. Let's serve the law. Hand them a track. Hand them a Bible. Hand them a, uh, a book. Hand them a car. If you don't have anything else, just tell them how God has done your life. Amen. Amen. I didn't know Kim that well until 20 some years ago. And, uh, and uh, I didn't even know her that well. We would see her off and on uh, at times. But I heard stories. Has she probably has she probably heard a lot of stories about me too? Praise God. So I thank God for a change of life. I'm not talking about age. I thank God I went through a change of life. Oh yes. I thank God that I'm no longer a sinner. I thank God that we are new creation, Sister Kim, Sister Mary. I thank God for that blood that we talked about earlier. I thank God, Brother Nelson, for that cleansing power Amen. of Jesus Christ. I thank God for that healing power of Brother Tim, Amen. praise God. Amen. I thank God that we're part of his family, praise God. Will you all stand tonight? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray that with the songs tonight and the prayers and the word that was spoken, the word that was preached, I pray that you receive something tonight. I pray that you have something to meditate on tonight. I said this morning, the greatest joy, the greatest joy that that we can have as, as, as church leaders and being in the church, and even if I wasn't a pastor, the greatest joy is just to see people receiving something and having a change in their life. Amen. A new way of talking, a new way of moving, a new way of, of, of thinking, praise God. Mm -hmm. And that's what God's Word does. It's changing us. Yes, it the Word of God never changes, but it's always changing us. Uh -huh. right. The Word of God stays the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But we're always being changed. Amen. We have that new mind, that new spirit within Amen. us. We can always better our best. We sing that song, Sanctuary. We've been singing it for almost eight years. Lord, prepare me. Guess what? He's still preparing me. He's still preparing you. Thank God he's still preparing us to get a little closer to be more like him. Praise God. If anybody needs prayer tonight, the prayer, the prayer line is open. Anybody need prayer at all, come forth and we'll pray for you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody need prayer at all?